So we've had some fun in this election cycle so far. We have. Um, I've now decided that Vivek Ramaswamy is the Republican version of Pete Buttigieg. He reminds me of the GOP version of Pete Buttigieg. Um, and, you know, my favorite Republican candidate, we talked about this a number of times, is Doug Burgum. It's Doug Burgum because he's from, I think it's North Dakota. He looks like he's an AI version of a Republican candidate from 1989. I mean, he is literally stuck in the 1980s. It's amazing to me he even knows how to put his pants on in the morning, given how, given how disconnected he is from the national mood when it comes to politics. The fact he even thinks he has any chance or... Oh, it's adorable. It is so cute. But now, ladies and gentlemen, we have found the Democratic version of Doug Burgum. This is glorious. I love it. It's the guy that you're seeing on screen right here, Representative Dean Phillips. So let's watch. Again, keep in mind, AI version of a Democratic candidate. This is the Democrats' Doug Burgum. Let's listen to him, and then I'll give you some more information on him. Democrats are telling me that they want not a coronation, but they want a competition. The New York Times poll from this week shows 55% of Democratic voters want some alternatives to the current people in the primary. 83% of those under 30, Democrats under 30, want alternatives, and about 76% of independents. So when I just want to make my decide? case. When are you going to decide? Well, I think, well, th let me get to my point. Okay. So if we don't heed... I've given you some room. <laughs> yes, you have. If we don't heed that call, shame on us. And the consequences, I believe, are going to be disastrous. So my call is to those who are well-positioned, well-prepared, of good character and competency, they know who they are, to jump in. Because Democrats and the country need competition. It makes everything better. That's my call to them right now. So if they don't, you will? I'm not saying I will. I, look, I think I'm well positioned to be president of the United States. You do? I do not believe I'm well positioned to run for it right now. People who are mm -hmm. should jump in because we need to meet the moment. The moment is now. That is what the country is asking. Why are you in 1989? I don't understand it. Why do you talk like that? Why do you look like that? What are you doing? I'm in position, I'm in good position to be president of the United States. Oh, are you? Oh, are you? At least he admits the next thing. I'm not in good position to run for it. Yeah, because nobody knows who you are. Your own family is like, Dean who? Dean what? Dean? Dean Phillips. Dean, look at this guy. Nobody has ever heard of this guy in the country until today, and then we still don't know who he is. Nobody knows who he is. Look at him. He's straight out of central casting for like a West Wing show to play a politician character. Who is this appealing to? Okay, so of course, naturally, I see this. I'm, I'm laughing at his presentation and a button-down man and 1989 politics. And I, the thing that annoys me the most is like posturing as being anti-establishment while you're the most establishment person in the world, right? Like that, that's what this guy's doing. Well, the, the Democrats say they want somebody new. and uh, Yeah, but not you. Definitely not you. You're, in fact, the frustration Democratic voters have with the party. You are worse than Joe Biden. Let me repeat that. You are worse than Joe Biden. Why do I say that? Well, let's read a little bit about Dean Phillips. Dean Benson Phillips. His middle name is Benson. Look, I don't know how I knew that before I even read it, but I somehow knew homie looks like a, he has the middle name Benson. Dean Benson Phillips is an American businessman and politician who has served the U.S. representative, who has served as the U.S. representative from Minnesota's third congressional district since 2019. The district encompasses the western suburbs of the Twin Cities, such as Bloomington, Minnetonka, Adena, Maple Grove, Plymouth, and Eden Prairie. Phillips is a member of the Democratic Party. Phillips has both owned and started several companies, in addition to serving as president and CEO of the family's liquor business, the Phillips Distilling Company. He is the former co-owner of Talenti Gelato, please, and co-owns Penny's Coffee, please. First elected in 2018, Phillips defeated six-term Republican incumbent Eric Paulson by flipping the once staunchly Republican district. He became the first Democrat to win the seat since 1958. He has since been re-elected twice. Phillips is considered a centrist and a moderate Democrat. Working alongside Republicans on multiple issues, he has been consistently ranked as one of the most bipartisan members of Congress. Phillips advocates for fiscal responsibility, public safety, environmental protection, and healthcare reform. With a net worth of 77 million in 2018, Phillips is one of the wealthiest members of Congress. My brother in Christ, Dean Phillips, you are worse than Joe Biden. You are worse than Joe Biden. At least Joe Biden pulled out of Afghanistan. Your ass wouldn't have done that. There's no way you would have done that. 
At least Joe Biden's trying to do the $20,000 worth of student loan debt reduction. There's no way your ass would do that. Fiscal responsibility. By the way, it said, oh, one of the most bipartisan members. Yeah, that sounds like, oh, yeah, that's good. He's bipartisan. Hooray. That's great. I'm sure like Joe Manchin ranks as one of the other most bipartisan members of the Senate in his case. I, in fact, there was a time when, uh, you know, they do the, the 538 did that like tracker thing where it's like what percentage of the time a politician votes with Trump. There's one period where it was like he was like 50 percent with Republicans and 50 percent with Democrats. Now, in a world where specifics don't matter. You might look at that and go, oh, yes, what a reasonable man. He's above the fray saying, you're half right and you're half right. And I will be the voice of reason. No, in reality, these are like some of the worst members of Congress. Why? Because typically what that means is if you're like a moderate Democrat, a blue dog Democrat, what that means is on economic issues, you are the biggest sellout. So like you will serve corporations the most. You're most against higher wages. You're most against raising taxes on the wealthy to fund social programs for working people. And then like on social issues every now and then you'll do the right thing or believe the right thing. But like, usually their wrong votes are squarely for the economic stuff, which should be the easiest layup if you actually want to represent the people. It's like when Joe Manchin I'm a West Virginia Democrat. I'm not a Washington Democrat. But when he says he's a West Virginia Democrat, what he means is I'm going to vote for deregulation for Wall Street. I'm going to vote to cut taxes on the wealthy. Like, what he doesn't mean is, okay, yeah, I have to be more conservative on abortion or on, you know, whatever, fill in the blank with some social issue. What am I going to do? Gun rights. I have to do it. But I'm still going to vote for a higher minimum wage. I'm still going to vote for unions, etc. It's the exact opposite. They don't do that at all. And so that this guy, I'm sure, embodies the exact problem. He's a guy who would look at Biden and go, the problem with Biden is he's gone way too far left. This is a guy who would say the problem with Biden is that he's acting like Bernie Sanders. I need everybody to to keep a keen eye out, right? Because oftentimes a sort of anti-establishment fervor can be used against you. And this guy who looks like he's AI generated, who's from 1989, who talks like a politician, this guy, his whole spiel is like, well, you know, Biden's unacceptable and people want a, a change and people want younger people and a new generation and an outsider and all this. Like, he'll say all these things, which is singing the right tune, but he actually wants to redirect you into an even more pro-establishment, pro-corporate direction. So be aware. Be aware of the frauds. Be aware of the people who will, like, posture as outsiders and a new generation, all that stuff. But ultimately, it's at, like the old quote about Obama. It's like change on the outside, continuity on the inside. That's what Dean Phillips represents. So it's just like you hear with Joe Manchin, the no labels people. Like they posture like they're outsiders and, you know, we're going to bring the change. And it's like, no, again, you guys all think Biden's too far left. And like the IRA was too much money and things of that. nature. You know what I mean? Like this is what they really believe. So in a sense, we're fighting a two front battle or like a three front front battle. It's like you're battling against the the Republican politicians. You're battling against the, and, and I guess it's just a two-front battle. Battling against the Republicans, and then you're also battling against the more conservative Democrats. And they've learned the trick now, of like, we'll pretend like we're outsiders. But you're not. You're actually even bigger insiders, and that's the problem. Hey, y'all, do me a favor and like and subscribe. It helps out big time in the algorithm. Click the bell as well for notifications when videos drop. And watch that video on screen right now. You know you want to.